Okay, Joni Rotten um, uploaded this old 1960s speech by Ed Griffin, um, More Deadly Than War, The Communist Revolution in America, obviously brought by Fabianism, by the Zios. Um, it's all here, all the five phases that we're in now of the combined disasters, false flag, are here explained in the 1960s by Ed Griffin, who does not mention the Zios. Oh, he mentions everything else, and he's saying, oh, you know, it's not good, but why doesn't he mention the uh, organ grinders, eh? Anyway, I'm going to be clicking through. I've, I've bookmarked all the various things in this one hour, 15 minute um, speech. I've watched it all, and it's all there, all the phases. So, so let's start with what I think they're going to do next. It's phase one. We've already had it, in a way, um, the, the arson on the West Coast, November the 18th, 2018, 118, 118, I've got your number. In France, it was 118, 2018. That's a date, November the 8th, 2018. Fires. This is their plan. Little fires everywhere. That's, that's also next, right? So listen to what he says here. It's very important. And long before that, there'd be tens of thousands of people dead in our cities. Not from thirst but because they were unable to defend what water they had from roving bands of desperate people who were dying of thirst. The road. And that's thinking only of the loss of water. In your mind's eye, compound that with no food, no electricity, no way to dispose of sewage. There's your blackout. No police protection, no water pressure to fight fires, no radio or TV, no telephone, no buses, no gasoline for your car, no way to escape, no place to go if you could. Don't think for a minute that the countryside would be immune from disaster either. In this issue of the Crusader, the communists call not only for extensive chaos within the cities, but for putting to the torch every village, every forest, every field, and every barn. The plan is for raging fires from one city to the next. The reason? Well, first, there's the value of sheer destruction. Secondly, it would force us to deploy our defenses and rescue units over the widest possible area. The communists point out that as long as our police and National Guard remain concentrated, they're invincible. But if they can be forced to spread out over the entire city and into the countryside as well, then they can be picked off from ambush one by one. And the third value of massive fire to the communists is psychological. The average American, they say, soft and decadent, when he sees billows of black smoke rising from one horizon to the other, when at night the only light he has to see by is the flickering red from flames leaping into the sky, he'll become paralyzed with fear and panic. He'll run away and hide and do nothing to interfere with the guerrilla bands as they strike at the community's power centers. 